حبیب اللہ الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله أبو بلوت ماستر حضرت محمد صلى الله عليه وآلہ وسلم has said that a person who sends 50 times daily درود or salutations or salawat upon me I will shake hands with him on the day of judgment. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Milad al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a theme under which we discuss many aspects of the beautiful life and the seerah. of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these are occasions of blessed opportunities to educate Muslim masses about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about his life and his greatness and his excellences and his beauties and his contribution. Today the topic which I have discussed is the generosity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Generosity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is compareless. No generous person in the world can be compared with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reaches such level of excellence that nobody can reach there. Ala Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnat Sayyidi Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Fazl-e Barilbi Nabbar Allahu Marqadahu He talks about the generosity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very beautiful way. He says, Wah, kya jood o karam hai shahe batha tera. Nahi sunta hi nahi maangne wala tera. Wah, is an expression in Urdu language. As in English you say, wow, you know, when you are amazed and when you are astonished, you say, wow. So in Urdu you say, wow. You might have heard, wow, wow. That's expression to show your amazement. واہ کیا جود و کرم ہے شاہ بطہ تیرا او دا کنگ آف بطہ او دا کنگ آف مدینہ المنورہ ایسا آوہ ماسٹر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واہو وڈی جنروسٹی کہ نہیں سنتا ہی نہیں مانگنے والا تیرا 
that your beggar never hears the word no from your lips, Ya Rasulullah. Allah Hazrat is Allah Hazrat. Kya style hai, you know? What a beautiful way of praising Rasulullah. Nahi sunta hi nahi maangne wala tera. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran Kareem, Inna a'qayna kal kawthar. Surely, we have bestowed upon you goodness in abundance. Not limited goodness. Goodness in abundance. Keep in mind that Allah is one. Allah is one. But the word inna is used and this symbolizes plural. Inna is a pronoun that denotes on mutakallim ma'al ghair means the speaker and there are many more with the speaker. So in other words, it denotes on plural. We. Allah is one. So the one person will say I. And if it is more than one, then they'll say we. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being one, he says we bestowed. So what's the reason? The reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O oh my beloved, my zat and all my attributes and all my af'al, my doings, which are the beginning of every reality of this universe, the barakat, the blessings of all of them we have put in your lap, O oh my beloved. We have given you the barakat of my zat and my sifat and my af'al, everything to you, O oh my beloved. And this, uh, you know, when we say kawthar, so many people have different understanding of Kawthar. Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the cousin of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imamul Mufassireen, the leader of all the commentators of quran Kareem, Very special personality. At the time of Tahajjud, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him dua. Allahumma Allimhu al-Qur'an, Allahumma faqihhu fi al-deen. Oh Allah, give him the knowledge of Qur'an. Oh Allah, give him the fiqh of deen. Give him the understanding of deen. This personality. When people asked him that, Oh Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas, tell us what is the meaning of al-Kawthar? He said the meaning of al-Kawthar is al khairul kathir goodness in abundance goodness in large quantity so somebody said isn't housek kosar uh, means housek kosar a pool in the jannat that's housek kosar he replied that is part of khair e So that's not the total goodness that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam possesses or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is actually a part of that goodness which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and then how much is that? In Tafsir ibn Jarir, the saying of Hazrat Ikrama radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hazrat Imam Mujahid radiallahu ta'ala anhu is quoted and they say Kawthar mean al khairu kulluhu that khair of everything wherever there is khair khair dunya wal akhira khair dunya wal uqba that khair of the dunya and khair of the akhira where there is any goodness where there is any khair that has been given to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam jahan jahan koi khair hai wo sarkar e dalam sallallahu alaihi wasallam ke daman mein dal di gayi it will never happen that there is something good and that's not found in the daman of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that will not happen so if izzat is good then the rasul of allah is given izzat if the wealth is good then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is given wealth don't ever think that my nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was poor my nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was never poor so ala hazrat radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu says दो जहां की नेमतें हैं उनके खाली हाथ में नॉट इन रियलिटी एम टी हैंड इन रियलिटी द नेमत्स ऑफ बोथ द वर्ल्ड आर इन दो There's another understanding of the sheer of Allah, Hazrat. You know, in Urdu, sometimes when we use the word "khali," it means empty, and sometimes we we use the word "khali," it means only. You understand that? It means only. So Allah, Hazrat, uses a word that has a double meaning. So if you take the other meaning, do jahan ki neemte hain unke khali hath me. it means that the nemats of both the worlds are only in his hands not in somebody else's hands only in his hands so if the children are good then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has children and if sons are good then he have sons and if the daughters are good then he has daughters and if the nasl and the running of family is good then he has family you know that when his uh, son hazrat ibrahim radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu passed away kuffar makkah they they passed ta'na they passed remarks bad remarks they said he has become munqati'un nasl he does not have nasl progeny because progeny nasl runs from sons he does not have son anymore so this is a defect this is not an excellence so why you muslims you say that everything excellent he got al kausar he got al khairul kaseer he got everything that is good he got having son and then son gets married and then that your sons children start that's your family your daughter marries someone out of your family and she carries the nasl of another family not your family and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not have son so his nasl ended his family ended so when they pass this remark of course that caused her to our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam first he lost his son he said for that secondly the tana comes the passing of bad remark comes so the heart of my beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was heavy 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the wahi to comfort the heart of his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this smallest surah in, in Quran and Kareem was revealed to, to make our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam feel good because he was sad. They are saying, you don't have family and family is good. Don't listen to them. I, your Lord, tell you, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar, we have bestowed upon you goodness in abundance. Every goodness we have given you. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar, you carry on doing what you have to do, read your namaz, sacrifice. But let me tell you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna shani yaka huwa al-abtar, Surely your enemy is family less, not you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts the heart of his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by answering to the allegations, the bohtan, the bad remarks of kuffar, the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't say anything, but Allah answers. Allah answers to those who have sons. Abu Jahl, Utba, Shaiba, they all had sons. Those who have sons, Allah says, they will not have family. And Rasulullah had no sons. Allah says, you will have family. So how do you understand that? In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made our beloved Nabi sallallahu very unique. Every person's family runs through his sons. And Rasulullah sallallahu is special that his family runs through his daughter, Bibi Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala. That's the speciality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sarkar edu alam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki nasal beton se nahi, balke aap ki beti se chali. So, Hazrat Imam Hassan and Hussain, they are the nasal of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why Sahaba Ikram, when they used to address Hazrat Imam Hassan or Hazrat Imam Hussain, they used to say, Ya Ibn al Rasul. That was the common dialogue and the language in Sahaba Ikram that they would address and call Hazrat Imam Hassan, Ya Ibn al Rasul. Hazrat Imam Hussain, Ya Ibn al Rasul. O oh, son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they knew that they are the nasal and the family and the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala no says, Teri nasle paak mein hai. Bacha, bacha noor ka. Tu hai aine noor, tera sab gharana noor ka. Now this is the living miracle of quran e Karim that Quran says that, O oh, beloved, your enemies are familyless. You are not familyless. Enemies had sons. How they became familyless? Go and roam around the whole world. Meet every person that is living on the surface of this earth. You will not find a single person who will tell you that I'm the family of Abu Jahl. Would you find one? You will not find one who will say, I'm the family of Utba or Shaiba. Unki nasal khatam. Their family ended, finished. But you will find hundreds of thousands of people in the world from all nations and countries who will come and tell you with pride and fakhr that I am the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And they will even tell you his family tree right from his father up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aksar sadat they can even tell you that my father is son of so and so and he's son of so and so and he's son of right up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So everything that's good is given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, some people might say this contradicts with other verses of Quran. Your explanation of Al Khairul Kathir contradicts with other verses of Quran 
For example, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي خَزَائِنُ اللَّهِ Say, O oh beloved, I don't say that I possess treasures of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells His beloved Nabi to tell the people that I don't own treasures. I don't have treasures. Treasure is something good, isn't it? Khazana achi jeez hai ke nahi hai? Treasure is something good. And you say that everything that's good is in the daman of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But Quran says he doesn't have treasures. So how does this correspond? Actually, this conflict, as people see, is not in Quran. The conflict is in the mind of the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran e Kareem, لَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا That if Quran was from other than Allah, you would definitely would have found ikhtilafan kathira many contradictions in quran e kareem but you cannot establish even a single contradiction in quran e kareem and that is an evidence that quran is from allah not from anybody else people want to create contradictions between the ayat of quran e kareem they want to create contradiction between quran and hadith they want to create contradiction between hadith and hadith. And let me tell you that you will never find contradiction between Quran and Quran. You will never find contradiction between Quran and hadith. And you will never find contradiction between hadith and hadith. Because the kalam of Allah is also wahi. And the kalam of Rasulullah sallallahu is also wahi. And wahi will never contradict with wahi. The difference is that Quran is wahi matluv, which can be recited in the namaz. And hadith is wahi ghair matluv, which cannot be recited in namaz. As far as being wahi is concerned, Quran and hadith are both the same. Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem, وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَىٰ that Rasulullah sallallahu does not say anything with his own desire. Whatever he says is being revealed upon him. Now tell me one thing. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Rasulullah sallallahu to say something, would he say something opposite? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to say, for example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say that Allah is one. And what he would tell his ummah? Will he come and say, there are two Allahs? What would he say? Allah is one. Whatever he is told, he will tell his ummah. He will never say something contrary to that. Then what is the reason that if Quran says that tell the people I don't have treasures. But he comes and he says He says that I have been given the keys to the treasures of this world. So how come? Apparently, he is saying opposite what he is being told to say. No, 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 no. Trust me. He is not saying opposite what he is told to say. In fact, the hukm of Quran is Qul, O oh beloved, لا أقول لكم. I don't say to you. 
that I have the treasures of Allah. There is no negation of having the treasures. There is negation of seeing. So these are two different things. Negation of seeing does not mean that he does not possess. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh my beloved, when you talk to the kuffar, when you talk to the enemies, when you talk to Abu Jahl, when you talk to Abu Lahab, they are outsiders. Tell them that I don't say to you that I have treasures because outsiders are thieves and thieves must not be told about the treasures. But when you meet the insiders, when you meet the family, when you meet the friends, when you meet Abu Bakr Siddiq, when you meet Umar Farooq, Usman Ghani, Ali Al Murtaza, Shere Khuda, and rest of the Sahaba, because they are of your own, then tell them, that I have been given the treasure to the, the keys of treasures of this earth. And let me tell you that the word key stands for power. How smartly the words are used in Hadith Mubarakah. Had he said, I have been given the treasures of this land, somebody would have said that, okay, we can accept that, that he got the treasures, but the treasures are locked up. Where's the key? I mean, you, you, you have your safe in your house and you got all the wealth in the house and you got diamonds and you got dollars and you got gold, but you don't have the key. How would that safe help you? You need to have the key to open so you can have access. So you look at the words of Hadith Mubarak. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, al ard." I have been given the keys to the treasures of this earth. So wherever there is a treasure, wherever there is a wealth under this earth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I have the key and I will open the treasure and I will distribute. Wow. So wherever there is a wealth, if there is a oil in any country, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam opened the lock of that oil. Where there is a gold, where there is silver, where there is coal, where there is steel, where there is gas, any wealth that is in the ground, that the key of that treasure is in the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he opens, then that particular nation gets the treasure. So, his powers, his access, his ikhtiyar is beyond our estimation. You know, key. Even in our normal, you know, language, we say he's a key man. He's a key man in that organization. We use that word. We say he's sitting on a key position. What does key symbolize this? Authority, power. Key man doesn't mean he carries keys all the time. It means that he got authority, he got power. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, I have the keys to the treasures of this world. So that means I have been given the authority. I'm authoritative. I'm powerful. I can take out, have access, and I can distribute. As it is mentioned in Hadith Mubarika that Wallahu yu'ti wa ana qasim. Allah gives and I distribute. Allah gives and I distribute. And what Allah gives and what I distribute is also very interesting. You know, according to the law of Arabic grammar, you know, a subject we read in our Dars Nizami, you know, when we become Alim, uh, Ilmul Ma'ani, you will find in Mukhtasarul Ma'ani and in the Shuruhat, 
of mukhtasar al maani that if ma'mool is not mentioned it means ma'mool is is uh, common you know if you know for example you know when you construct a sentence let me make it easy for you that when you construct a sentence in arabic you must have a verb verb and then you must have a subject and you must have a have an object you know <laughs> let me give you an example like if i say zaid hit amar zaid hit amar is a sentence so hitting is a verb and who hit is zaid so zaid is subject and who's being hit is amar so amar is object if you still remember some of your grammar when you were in, in the school i'm just trying to refresh you so this is how the sentence is made sentence is verb subject object but according to arabic law if object is missing that mean object is common and unrestricted so it means that wallahu yu'ti allah gives what he gives is not mentioned what he gives is not mentioned it means that what he gives is unrestricted you know if it's 1 or 2 or 10 or 20 or 50 you know can be counted then it would have been mentioned because they are so common and they are so many and they are so unrestricted that what is given the grant is not mentioned it means that what allah gives you cannot count that that's the real meaning of hadith e mubarakah what allah gives you cannot count and then the interesting thing is the second part of hadith wa ana qasim rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that i'm a qasim i'm a distributor and what he distributes that's also not mentioned so this means that his distribution is also uncountable unlimited so allah gives to his beloved nabi unlimited and his beloved nabi distributes unlimited kaun deta hai dene ko mu chahiye dene wala hai sacha hamara nabi the ala hazrat poetry is the juice of quran and hadith it's the ex- extract of quran and hadith that allah gives our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam countless and our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam distributes countless and now some people say that this hadith is in babul ilm and it means that allah gives the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ilm and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam distributes ilm you know, there are some people whose mind is set not to accept any greatness for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they always find excuses even in academic field they find excuses to show that his greatness is limited yes we we do understand there is hadith and that hadith says allah gives and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says i distribute but because this hadith is in the bab or in the chapter of ilm it means that allah gives ilm and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam distributes ilm and nothing else but we say that when allah when when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has left something unconditional who are you to make it conditional when allah and his rasul leave something unconditional trust me there is no mufti there is no alim there is no shaykh al hadith there is no authority in fiqh that has got the authority to make it muqayyad or to make it conditional you have to leave it unconditional so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not say that allah gives me knowledge and i distribute knowledge rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says 
unconditionally allah gives me and i distribute it means that there is no restriction and there is no qaid allah gives everything and his nabi distributes everything so yes indeed he distributes ilm indeed he distributes sharia indeed he gives ma'rifat he gives tariqat indeed he gives children indeed he gives izzat indeed he gives wealth anything that's good that's beneficial to you that's good according to your standards that's legitimate and legal in the sight of sharia you can go to the door of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ask him inshallah you will get it that's why this is the culture of muslims right from the day first that they begged at the door of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam even right up to jannat they will come and say ya rasulullah give me jannat several hadith that they indicate that sahaba will ask jannat from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would give them hum rasulullah ke jannat rasulullah so we ask rasul ya rasulullah give us jannat his generosity is unlimited you know an an incident beautiful incident of a very great alim very great scholar of islam ghazali e zama razi e daura hazrat allama sayyid ahmad saeed kazmi rahmatullah taala alay you know one day he was lecturing and a student a girl sent a note she was christian and he was lecturing in university and she sent a very interesting note and she said that molana sahib i know this might be difficult to answer but if you cannot answer then at least read out my question and let everyone know that this was the question and you were unable to answer she like pre assumed that it's so difficult question that no molana would be able to answer she said that i've heard in a lecture of a muslim scholar who was talking about the generosity of arabs that arab people were very generous by nature and then he gave a story of a person from a tribe bani tai hatam tai and he said that you know hatam tai was a very generous man and his generosity was such that he built a special house to give people and he made eight doors of that house and the beggars and the needy the destitutes were allowed to come and knock at any door and he'll open and he'll give it's a it's a it's a very big example of generosity he was so generous one day a very funny beggar came he came and he knocked at the first door hatam tai as his nature and habit he opened the door and he gave him khairat and then this beggar went to the second door and he knocked so now hatam tai opened and looked at him recognized him because he was there on the first door and now he's there at the second door still he didn't say a word he gave it now what would you do at your shop if a beggar comes and you give him 10 cent or one rand and after half a minute he comes back i'm sure you're going to chase him away but hatam tai did not chase him away he gave him second tai 
And this beggar, he said, no, I'll go. since he is so generous, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the third one. So he went to the third door, he knocked, Hatham Dai opened, looked at him, recognized him. No question asked, gave him. He went to the fourth door, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. At every door, Hatam Dai looked at him, recognized him without questioning, without showing any anger, gave him. So this girl asked the question to Ghazali Azama that you talk about the generosity of your Nabi. Is there an example in the life of your Nabi which is equal to this? And this generosity is being praised by Muslim scholars. So if you don't have any example, then don't say that our Nabi is the most generous. Be fair. So that was a very critical question. And Ghazali Azama, he was Ghazali Azama. Promptly he answered, he said that, O oh lady, the example which you have quoted of the generosity of Hatam Tai, according to my understanding, that is the example of his being stingy. So everybody was shocked. How come? I mean, he got eight doors and he gives every time. I mean, he doesn't chase anyone. So that is indeed a beautiful example of generosity. How can this scholar say that that is the example of his being stingy, he said, actually, when that beggar came to the first door, Hatam Tai gave him whatever he decided to give him. The need of the beggar was not fulfilled, therefore he went to the second door. Hatam Tai gave him second time. The need of the beggar was not fulfilled, so he went to the third door. He gave him. Need of the beggar was not fulfilled, so he went to the fourth door. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And who says that after he got the eighth time, his need was fulfilled? Actually, Hatam Tai did not have more doors. Maybe he would have then gone to the 10th door or the 12th door or the 100th door. So you, you, you quoting this as an example of beautiful generosity? No! It cannot be compared with the generosity of my beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because when beggar came to the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would give so much in one shot that there will be no need for beggar to come back and ask again. There will be no need. So you comparing Hatam Tai with the generosity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You know Hazrat Rabia bin Kaab Aslami radiallahu ta'ala anhu he used to serve Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for wuzu you know, water for wuzu and other hajat and needs, he would assist Khadim. And one day, this Khadim got lucky. The, the mercy, the ocean of mercy was in mood. And when that ocean of mercy was in mood, so he said to Hazrat Rabia bin Kaab, Sal. Sal means ask. Hazrat Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Dehlvi Rahmatullah writes under the commentary of this hadith that that principle I explained you earlier that Ma'mul or the object of Sal is not mentioned. It means that Rasulullah gave him unconditional permission. That son, ask whatever you want to ask. And who can who can say that? I can't say 
ask whatever you want to ask. Now if I say, ask whatever you want to ask, and you say, Molana, give me one million rand. Now I say, no, no, sorry, I can't do that. Ask me ten rand, ask me five rand. That, that suits my capacity, I can do that. But million rand, I've never even seen how the million rand look. So you, so why must I, I even say on the first place that ask whatever you want to ask? It's like I'm going to cause embarrassment to myself. Why must I, you know, brag like this? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Rasul of Allah, the perfect being, he cannot use weak and loose words. His words are always perfect and meaningful. So when he says, ask whatever you want to ask, he knows that if he asks me something unusual, I will be able to give him. He gave him and he was Sahabi Rasul. He knew the authority of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because these people, they did not learn their Islam from Najd. They did not learn their Islam from Iran. They did not learn their Islam from India or Pakistan or from any part of the world. They learned their Islam from the founder of Islam. So they knew Islam better than all of us. So when he was told, Sal, so he knew what I can ask. And he, he's a smart beggar. He taught us how to beg from the big doors. You know, from the small doors, you ask for small things. And from the big doors, you ask for big things. Now you, you're talking to the king of all the Anbiya alayhim salam. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, since you have given me the permission, then inni uridu murafaqataka fil jannah. Ya Rasulullah, I need your company in the jannah. How smart he is, he didn't ask jannah. He didn't say, Uridu al Jannah, that I need Jannah. He said, he, he trusted that I'm a believer and I'm a Sahabi, and every Sahabi is Jannati. Wa he had no doubt in his mind as being Jannati, but he wanted something more in Jannah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I want your company in the Jannah. And Rasulullah sallallahu did not say, oh, you asked me something very big, you know, ask me something that's within my range. Or ask me something that's within my power or my capacity or my authority. Don't ask me that's not in my range. Was that the answer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to Rabiya bin Kaab? No, he asked company in the Jannat. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi tells him, Awa ghaira zalika, do you want something more? <laughs> Where are you going to find that generosity? Can you compare Hatam Tai with the generosity of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No way! And he says, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, Something more, something beside it. He says, that's it. Ya Rasulullah, kafi hai. In, in, in my own style, in my own way, I'm saying it. Bahut ho gaya. You know, that's enough. My begging ball has got no place left. You have given me so much in one shot. Now, the beggar is not asking for more, but the giver is saying, you want more? That's the generosity of my beloved master. That's why Allah Hazrat, Allah Hazrat 
sees through all this and he says wah kya jood o karam hai shahe batha ke nahi sunta hi nahi maangne wala kaun deta hai dene ko muh chahiye muh mean here authority you need authority to give and who has been given the authority to authority to give is our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam so alhamdulillah azza wa jal we are the ummatis of that beautiful powerful mukhtar nabi and his generosity has not ended his generosity is continuing at all times because hadith e pak says allah yu'ti allah gives and his giving is continuing all the time because there is istimrar there is dawam there is continuity this verb fil muzari is such that gives you the meaning of istimrar continuity that allah is giving all the time allah never stops giving and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam never stops distributing allah is giving all the time and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is distributing all the time now if someone says you know rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away okay when he was living it happened at that time and it's no more happening then he has to worry about his iman and he has to prove his iman because the function of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam never stops he is the rasul of allah and risalat never ends because risalat is the function of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how can function keep on happening when the functionary is dead does that make sense functionary must be there for function to take place and function of risalat 24 hours without missing a moment is continuing all the time so the functionary must be alive and must be there subhanallah subhanallah let's say for example if hypothetically it's assumed that for a second rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not there then whose kalma are you going to read in that moment who will be rasul in that moment whose risalat would be functioning in that moment so it's impossible therefore it is necessary to believe in the aqida of hayatun nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam because without that aqida person would be announcing his kufr because then the question would arise if you believe for a while that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is dead then in whom are you believing for that time so alhamdulillah azza wa jal in the mahawl and the environment of ahlus sunna wal jamaa and in the mahafil and majalis of eid milad an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam we discuss special qualities and special aspects of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam which are not discussed on usual occasions therefore these milad an nabi functions must continue and they must happen more and more and more and more scholars and ulama must be invited to discuss these topics unfortunately the 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 education part is becoming weaker and weaker we have many function programs based on nat musharas or readings and etc but we don't have scholars sallu ala al habib sallallahu taala ala muhammad
keep ascending success stay